Welcome! In this segment today, we're taking a look at searching for journal articles. The way to search for journal articles are to use a research tool called Journal Article Databases. To note, the term Journal Article Databases is often just called Citation Databases or just generically Databases. So be careful when you're out there doing your research. When someone tells you to search a database, it's probably a Citation Database or a Journal Article Database. Let's talk about what's inside a journal article database. Inside a journal article database are a series of indexes, abstracts, titles, authors, keywords, and dates. Everything about journal articles that you need to search. The companies that maintain these indexes create special user interfaces and computer software programs that easily allow a person to search and access the information inside their database. When you're searching inside a journal article database, oftentimes you'll find a basic citation, an abstract, which is a nice summary of the article, and sometimes you'll find the full text of the article. To talk about journal article databases, we need to talk a little bit about the history of them. In the past, when you would search for journal article databases, uh, journal articles, you would use print journal index and abstracts. So, for example, the top example I have here is called Zoological Record, and it, it, this one in particular dates back to 1864. So, from the mid-1800s until the 1900s, um, late 1900s, people would have to go to these print volumes, look up their subject, and find their journal articles. I want to take a look at an insi the inside of one of these, just to show you how people used to do journal article searching. So, for example, this particular volume is for biological abstracts. So, if I was doing research on biological abstracts, I would have to go to the print volume and look up my subject. In this case, it was called ecology. And then I would look for my journal articles, and I'd go through until I found one that I liked. It would give me the citation information, everything I need to find the article, and a nice summary of that article. So, in the past, one would have to go, again, to your library, look for these print index and abstracts, go inside them based by subject or title, and find the journal articles. Then you'd have to go to the shelf and you'd have to find all those articles on the shelf and photocopy them. Again, these date back to the mid-1800s. If you fast forward to 1980s, when most libraries had computers and most publishers now moved to internet and servers, we went to databases on CD-ROM. So publishers would take all of this print information, put it on a CD-ROM, and send a library a CD-ROM. And when you went to the library, you would go to a computer workstation and search a database on CD-ROM. That didn't last very long because of the internet. Um, in the 1990s, most publishers took all this information, put it on their computer servers, and allowed libraries to access the information through the internet. Now, it is important to note that these journal article databases that you access in libraries are paid subscriptions. So libraries are working with publishers and vendors to buy access. It appears to be free and seamless, but there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to access this information. So again, in the past, you used to have to use print indexes and abstracts that had the citations and the abstracts, and then you'd go find the journal articles. Then it went to CD-ROM, and then very short time there, then it went to the internet. So now you search databases on the internet. And there's just a handful of companies that do these databases. Um, when you go from library to library, you will be seeing the same companies over and over. There's very few companies that do these services. And most companies have a number of databases. So for example, ProQuest is a big database right now, and they have databases on many different subjects. So you'll see the same database company at different colleges and different public libraries. So you get familiar with them as you do your research. When you go to do your research, you'll want to check at your local public library or the academic library you're using to see what journal article databases they currently subscribe to. It's going to differ from library to library. Let's go ahead and take a look inside a journal article database. This is an example of the ProQuest database called Agricola, and that's showing you the screen you first see when you click on ProQuest Agricola and the main search screen. There it is close up. 
And Agricola is a wonderful database that searches for agricultural information. This is a close-up of how you could do your search. Again, this is not very intimidating. A lot of people are intimidated prior to doing uh, searches for journal articles. This is an example of a journal article database screen. Very user-friendly. You would put your keywords in at the top, and you would put any limits on using those uh, limits as you go down there for um, types and languages. And it goes down even further. You can do more limits. So the Agricola database covers a number of topics. Um, along with agricultural information, it could cover um, information about gardening and, of course, farming, because that's under um, agriculture, maybe even forestry. And Agricola covers not just journal articles. It also covers things like books, monographs, conference proceedings, thesis and dissertations, patents, multimedia, computer software, and technical reports. It's also interesting to note that a lot of these databases will now search the internet for you. So when you're in a database and you're searching for journal articles, a lot of times it will recommend to you websites that relate to your topic. So when you're in a journal article database, you're getting more than just journal articles. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example search in Agricola. In this example search, I searched for organic farming. So all I did was type in my keywords in quotes because organic farming is a phrase. What you might want to do too before you use a database is look for a help button to see if there's some search tips. That was one of the search tips this database had. You'll see that after I do my search, it lists out my results. I can change the order of my results. Right now it's putting them in a relevancy rank, but I could switch the order to a date order if I wanted to look at the newest first maybe. And then as I'm working through my search, you're going to want to put some limits on. A lot of times when people do journal article database searches and you get thousands of hits, you think that you did a good search. But that's really too many to look at. So after you do your journal article search, you're going to want to use the limits in your database to narrow your search. So for example, if you were just looking for peer-reviewed journal articles, Look to see if your database has an option to just limit to peer-reviewed journals. There's a close-up here of what it, that option looks like. It's just a little button here, and it says peer-reviewed. And if I clicked on that, it would take that number down to a much smaller number, and it would just be peer-reviewed journal articles. Also, when you're doing your database searching, you're going to want to look for suggestions for other subjects. So my topic was organic farming. But the database is looking at all of my search results and giving me back the top keywords. So I could jot those down and search them later, or I could click on those and it will actually launch into a search for me. Another tip that you could use when you're searching your database is to resort and narrow your search results by the options your database has. In this case, I can click on articles to just limit to articles because Agricola and many other databases search more than just journal articles. I could also limit by date or by language. Again, your goal is to take your keyword, put it into your database, see if your database has your keyword in there, and then use those limits and those options to manipulate the data to get a manageable number of search results. So again, when you're using your database, you want to read the help to get any search tips, Put in your keywords to make sure your database has items on your topic, and then use those limits and sort options to get it down to a comfortable number. Also, a really neat feature that some databases have is the site option. So if I'm looking at a particular item, there's a button that says site, and I can click on site, and it will actually give me an example of how my item I'm looking at could be cited so that I could take that citation and highlight it, copy and paste it, and put it into my bibliography to use in my paper or to use as a footnote. Let's go ahead and look at another database right now called Scopus. Scopus is the world's largest abstract and citation database with over 33 million records. Here's an example of the Scopus interface. And again, I'm going to do a search for organic farming. And there's a look at how the search results look in Scopus. 
Scopus is done by a different company than ProQuest. So the search screen is looking different and the results screen is looking different, but it's pretty much the same information. It's going to give you citation information. It should have a link to an abstract if available. And you're always going to want to look to see if there's a link to full text. Most databases will have on either side of your search results some kind of option to limit. So you'll see here there is the uh, column there where you can limit. So you could limit by, by date or by um, language and you can get that result list down. One of the neat things about the Scopus database is it tells you how many times an article has been cited. So for example, if I'm looking at a list of results from the Scopus database, there's a column that tells me how many times that particular article has been cited. So I've done my search for organic farming. I got this great list of results. And then I can see, wow, people are using this article. They're citing it a lot. You can tell by the column there that says how many times it's been cited. I can then click on that option for the articles that it, how many times it's been cited. And then I can look at those articles. So even if you find just a couple results in a database, you can use that one citation to branch off and find other journal articles. You could use something like Scopus, where you can look at the articles that are citing that article. Or another great idea is when you find that one journal article that really works for you, to look at the bibliography at the end of that journal article. And then you can look at those journal articles and find those to continue your research. So again, you don't need to find thousands of, of results in these databases. You just need to find a handful that really connect to your topic and you can go from there. Here's just some overall tips about using journal article databases. Again, you're going to want to ask at your local library what journal article databases or what citation databases they subscribe you. And you're going to want to tell them what your topic is. I'm searching for organic farming. What databases would be good for me? Some libraries subscribe to hundreds of journal article databases. Sometimes it's easier to ask at the reference desk to have them suggest for you the best databases. Again, most libraries subscribe to multiple databases and you can get lost searching those databases. So it's best to ask for help. You're going to want to search more than one database. Each company and each database searches a different pool of literature and a different pool of publications. So you're going to want to search more than one. Especially if the first one you searched you didn't find any results or it just wasn't working for you. You can move on and try another database. A couple more tips. Remember to resort your search results and use the limits that are available to you. You can really narrow your search results down after you do your search. Another tip is to ask if your library has remote access to their journal article databases and citation databases. When you're in your library doing your research, a lot of times um, you want to do your research from home. Maybe you have a printer at home, your thumb drive is at home. Most libraries will allow you to access the databases from home. It's a very simple setup. Usually it's setting up a remote access code. So be sure to ask at your local library after you use their databases, can I use these at home? So thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time.